Assalamu alaikum. My name is Zera Mahmood and I am lecturer at HRS Aga Khan Government Girls Degree College, PIB Colony. I am teaching economics at intermediate and degree level classes, especially first year commerce, BCom part 1 and BA part 1. As we know that due to lockdown situation in our country, many offices have been closed and educational activities has been suspended last week of fire. As a result, our student facing problem in their study. Today, I will present the lecture of indifference curve properties. This lecture will help them. Let's start lecture. What is indifference curve? An indifference curve represents the different combination of two goods, and each combination of these goods provides the same level of satisfaction. This white line curve represents the indifference curve and it is the locus of point from, from point A, B, C and so many points. These points present the different bundles of good X and Y but at each point level of satisfaction remains constant. You can see that at point A consumer consuming 50 units of good Y and 10 units of good X. If he wants to increase the utility of good X, so he sacrifices some unit of good Y and at point B, he taking 30 unit of good Y and 25 unit of good X. Again, if he wants to increase the utility of good X from 25 to 60 unit at point C, so he sacrifices 20 unit of good Y and at point C, he is taking 10 unit of good Y and 60 unit of good X. So, indifference curve, locus of all points, which provides the same level of satisfaction with different bundles of good X and Y. Start the properties of indifference curve. First one is indifference curve slope down. Second is, it is convex to origin. Third, the higher indifference curve represents the higher level of satisfaction. Fourth, indifference curve cannot cross each other. Fifth, indifference curve never touches the axis. Sixth, indifference curve cannot be thick. I will explain all these properties one by one. Let's take first property. That is, indifference curve slope down. Indifference curve has downward or negative slope from left to right of the origin. For simplicity, I take two shapes for indifference curve. First one is downward sloping and second one is upward sloping. Let's see which shape is satisfied the indifference curve definition. In our first shape, if consumer wants to increase the utility of good X, so he moves from point A to point B and sacrifices some unit of good Y in order to get one additional unit of good X. So, there is a trade-off between good X and good Y in first figure. On the other hand, in second figure, that is upper slope curve, the movement from point C to point D shows that there is no trade-off occurred between good X and good Y. Consumer always preferred point D as compared to point C because at this point he is getting more unit of good Y and more unit of good X as compared to point C. So this curve does not follow the definition of indifference curve so it is decided Indifference curve must have negative slope from left to right of the origin. Second property is it is convex to the origin. Why? Because of law of diminishing marginal rate of substitution between good X and good Y. What is marginal rate of substitution? The marginal rate of substitution is the maximum amount of Y. The consumer is willing to give up to get an additional unit of good X. Okay, we take 
concave shape and convex shape. In convex shape, movement from point A to point B shows that consumer is give up 3 unit of good Y in order to get 1 additional unit of good X and movement from point B to point C shows that he is ready to give up 2 unit of good Y for to getting an additional unit of good X and similarly at point C to D he is give up 1 unit of good Y to get 1 additional unit of good X. So, this pattern shows that in order to get one additional unit of good x, the consumption of good y has been decreasing. In concave shape, in order to get one additional unit of good x, consumer is ready to give up one unit of y. Again, in order to take one additional unit of good x, he is ready to give up two units of good y. And again, in order to get one additional unit of good x, he is ready to give up three units of good y. You can see that in two diagrams, in this diagram and in this pattern, the consumption of good Y decreases in order to get one additional unit of good X. That's why the slope of indifference curve becomes diminished. Whereas in this diagram, the consumption of good Y increases in order to get one additional unit of good X. So slope of indifference curve does not diminish. So it is clearly defined. In the indifference curve has convex shape. Third property is that the higher indifference curve represents the higher level of satisfaction. It means bundle on indifference curve further away from the origin are preferred to those on indifference curve closer to the origin. This is indifference map. Indifference curve IC1 has a point A. And indifference curve 2 has a point B and indifference curve 3 has a point C. The level of satisfaction of C is greater than B and B and level of satisfaction of B is greater than level of satisfaction point A. Because at point C consumer getting more units of good X and good Y as compared to A and B. That's why the higher indifference curve always represents the higher level of satisfaction and it is away or further away from the origin. Fourth property is that indifference curve cannot cross each other. What does it mean? In this diagram we have two indifference curves that is indifference curve 1 that is indifference curve 2. And point C is present if indifference curve cross each other so point C is a common point that represent the level of satisfaction on simultaneously on indifference curve 1 and indifference curve 2 okay the level of satisfaction B and C both are equal because both are lies on the same indifference curve similarly the level of satisfaction point A and C are equal because both lies on indifference curve 1. These, point, these two points are equal to point C. It means that the level of satisfaction A and B should be equal. But in a diagram, we can see that the level of satisfaction B or A is not equal because level of satisfaction of B is greater than the level of satisfaction of A. And B is on indifference curve 2 and A is on indifference curve 1. So, it means that indifference curve cannot cross each other. Fifth property is indifference curve never touches the axis. But uh, we suppose that the indifference curve touches the both x-axis and y-axis. In diagram 1, if indifference curve touches the x-axis, in diagram 2, indifference curve touches the y-axis. In a diagram 1, you can see that these two points represent the level of satisfaction of a consumer. At this point, consumer taking utility from both goods X and Y. If indifference curve intersects the X axis, the consumer enjoyed only utility from good X because he is not taking any unit of good Y. It is against the definition of indifference curve. Similarly, 
At this point, consumer taking utility from good X and good Y. If he touches the Y axis, so he taking only good Y. So again, it is against the definition of indifference curve because indifference curve represent the combination of two goods, not only one good. So indifference curve never touches the axis. Six and the last property is that indifference curve cannot be thick. In our diagram, we take thick indifference curve and these three points A, B, C are on the same indifference curve. We know that according to the definition of indifference curve, each point provides the same level of satisfaction regardless of the different bundle of goods. But in this diagram, if indifference curve is thick, point C represent the more unit of good Y and good X as compared to point B and A. Similarly, point B represent the more unit of good X and good Y as compared to point A. It is impossible the points provide the different level of satisfaction on the same indifference curve. So, indifference curve cannot be thick. Okay students, thank you so much.